we're going to see how to add some user input to our GUI application. So we'll pick right up where we left off the last time. And before I put in uh, text boxes to hold our inputs, I'm going to assign variables to store the data that gets input there. Okay, so since it's in a class, I have to reference self and I just make up a name, I'll call it present value. This is going to be how much are you borrowing? And there are different kinds of variables that tkinter will allow. Uh, we're going to store these as string variables. All right, it also has an integer variable and a float, which it calls a double variable. All right, I'm going to just store them all as strings because that will leave the text boxes empty. If I assign them numbers, uh, by default, they're going to have a value of zero. All right, so before we do any calculations on them, we'll have to convert them. Okay, so this will be our variables to store input. Uh, we have another one, which is the interest rate. Again, it's going to be a string variable. And then uh, we have one to store the term. Okay, so those are the inputs. And then we have two outputs as well. And we'll have self payment. And we'll have self total. Okay, so now we're ready to put in some widgets to hold these things. Okay, we saw a text widget earlier and it just gives sort of a big box uh, for a traditional sort of default sized text box, we're going to use the entry widget. And then, yep, we're going to place it in the window. And then we're going to assign it a text variable. Okay, so this is the keyword you use, whether or not it's a number or a string. And the first one is just going to be the present value. And then we're going to set a couple of uh, formatting options. So since it's a number, I want it to be uh, right aligned. So I will justify Okay, so and then we're going to place it in the grid and this is going to be row one, column two. Okay, and I'm going to give it just a little bit of padding too. Okay, so this is going to make it sort of be uh, spaced in a little bit from the right edge. All right, we're going to have two others that are very similar to hold the interest rate and the loan term. So I'll copy and paste, and then I'll just make a couple of changes. So uh, this one's going to be the interest rate, uh, row two, column two. Everything else is the same. Okay, one more time for the term, okay, row three, column two. Okay, and then we'll make a couple of widgets to store the outputs in. And uh, those don't need to be entries or text boxes because people expect to type in those. So I'm going to store these in labels. It still has a text variable, and this time it's going to be self-payment. Okay, we're going to set another formatting option. So I'm going to set the font this time. And for font, even if I just want to make the font bigger, I'm going to have to tell it what name to use too. So we'll use Helvetica 12, and we'll make it bold. Okay, we're going to justify on the right again, and then we're going to place it in the grid. All right, we're going to skip row four because that was just a placeholder. So we have a space between our inputs and outputs. So it's going to be row five, column two. Okay, and let me just put this down on the next line because I, I need to add another property here. We're going to set a sticky to, and we're going to say, uh, to the east. Okay, so there's the uh, widget that's going to hold our actual payment, and then we'll make another one that's going to hold our total of payments. And we'll put it in row six. Okay, so let's see how this is coming along. Okay, so there's our application so far. We can see there's text boxes. We can type in here. Whatever I type in here will be assigned uh, to this variable. So next up, we'll see how to calculate and display that payment.